The arnold Lagu Moving Average, or ALMA for short, is a moving average variation that is meant to be smoother and more responsive. It attempts to do this by tracking price more closely to quickly reflect current movements. In theory, this indicator can help improve performance in terms of filtering out noise during indecisive markets and reducing latency to allow for quicker identification and reactions to trend changes. If you are interested, you can research further details on the indicator's calculations. The main focus here will be on examining real chart examples, rather than just going over diagrams and outlining theory. We'll see the various uses of the ALMA indicator, along with preferred conditions for its application and cases where it fails and or has limitations. A wide range of chart examples will be covered from various time ranges. So no matter when you watch this, or which charts you choose to apply the ALMA indicator on, information presented here will be of use to you. Since the ALMA indicator can produce a smoother and more responsive moving average variation, it can alert us to trend changes even if they are relatively small or quick changes of a trend. Though, when the market is flat and in a period of ambiguous low activity, there will still be difficulties in interpreting clear results, and there can be mixed outcomes if no decisive movements take place over an extended period of time. ALMA can still generally identify bearish phases when price moves and especially closes under it consecutively, but be aware there can still be some short-term difficulties, especially with volatile bearish retracements. Whereas sharp downswings can readily be identified when price goes under the ALMA, then bullish reversals and even continuations can often be clearly outlined once price continues to close above the ALMA. So instead of using this indicator when the market is volatile and in a period of ambiguous trading activity, it's best used with clearly developed or emerging trends. For example, bearish trends that quickly close and stay under the ALMA. As usual, sharper reversals are identified once price decisively crosses under the ALMA for a bearish trend and over it for a bullish trend. Since we know there can be difficulties when price is more volatile and remains relatively unchanged, it's advisable to be extra observant to short-term development since they can often lead to impactful breakouts in the medium to long term. Such as with this quick and relatively unstable double top formation, which had its bearish reversal confirmed after that first large close under the ALMA followed by consecutive candles that stayed entirely under the ALMA. Usually in the middle phase of a continuation when price moves relatively flat, there usually won't be full candles that form entirely above or below the ALMA, unless they're highly volatile conditions. This is a fairly standard case price stays on the ALMA before falling back under it decisively to finish the bearish continuation. Then when there are decisive closes and even full candles that form above the ALMA, there's a clear bullish reversal. Here are some common default settings which we have been using thus far. They are a good baseline and often don't need to be changed if there is change, it's usually with the window size, and that would be to produce broader coverage over a longer time period. However, since this is an indicator primarily meant for short-term use in the identification of sharp and quick movement, there are generally fewer use cases for setting the window size over a range of even 30 to 60. Usually there'll be little to no alteration for the offset setting, which can affect the smoothness of the ALMA and how closely it tracks price. Sigma will also usually have little to no change because the effect on the ALMA, especially its smoothness, is usually not impactful. Make some alterations to the settings and experiment, it generally won't overcome some of the limitations, especially when the market is more volatile and moves indecisively. If there is some personal preference for different settings, it can be useful to keep the default settings and place another ALMA indicator alongside it. In addition to an ALMA indicator with the default settings, we will add a second one using lower values to theoretically get closer and therefore better coverage of short-term trend changes. This second ALMA will be distinguished by a purple color to more easily identify bullish and bearish crossovers with the ALMA indicator in pink, which is on default settings. When the shorter term purple ALMA crosses under the baseline of the ALMA in pink on default settings, it signifies bearish sentiment increasing in the short term and bullish sentiment is said to increase in the short term when the purple line crosses over the pink line. For example, during these downswings, there is sustained bearish sentiment when the shorter term purple line stays under the longer term pink line. With quick and volatile retracements, this method of combining two ALMA indicators can to some degree help, for example, distinguish between a bullish retracement within a larger downtrend continuation and a more decisive long-term bullish reversal. By more quickly displaying these crossovers to identify trend changes more quickly than other moving average variations. And helping to filter out more but definitely not all market noise that comes from small insignificant movements.
Let's take a look at what happens when the ALMA indicator has its settings changed to cover a longer duration and wider price range. The resulting crossovers with the first ALMA indicator at default settings representing a baseline and coverage of shorter term events reveals mostly inadequate results that are not so effective in identifying changes in sentiment in the short and long term. It's not much of a surprise since this indicator is best suited for short and sharp movements. Drastically increasing the window size for much broader coverage does actually identify some major swing points and breakouts. However, it will of course have a greater lag in reflecting more current market events, especially when there is more horizontal range-bound movement that contains more frequent swing points. So in this situation, the first ALMA indicator in pink is representing a baseline of more short-term market activity, while the second ALMA indicator in purple is representing market activity in the longer term. The combination of these two extremes results in intermediate coverage of trend changes that isn't quite as responsive as focusing the pair of ALMA indicators on the chart in the medium to short or just short time range we covered with previous examples. These aren't terrible outcomes, they're just mediocre results in terms of more quickly identifying rapid trend changes. For example, the first shorter term ALMA indicator in pink will generally stay under the second longer term purple ALMA indicator during bearish cases and go over it during bullish phases. Though usually the intersection of these two ALMA indicators will happen closer to the middle of a trend, rather than near the beginning. Over here, rising price begins to stall and attention focuses towards the lower 14 range. Apply the ALMA indicator with default settings. Then, for more decisive confirmation of a downtrend developing further, it's not good enough just to have price under the ALMA indicator. Even though we've had several closes in a row below it. It would also be necessary to close under 14, which has happened. However, candles over the past week still maintain contact with the 14 range and or the ALMA indicator. Here's the decisive break lower when contact is lost with both. And this bearish strength is persisting since the next few candles also fully form under the ALMA indicator and the 14 range. Now there's the possibility of moving towards more neutral to even bullish sentiment, as there's recontact with the ALMA indicator and price even closes over it, which is quite natural given that the chart had fallen into a significant lower boundary in the broader context. Given this background, price falling back under the indicator isn't necessarily a strong sign of a bearish continuation to come, unless price also begins to close and clear under this lower boundary. This seems less likely at the moment, especially with declining selling volume. Now with an incline developing in the short term, it's also useful to mark 12 as a short term upper boundary which is being contacted and progressively being cleared. At the same time, price is consistently closing over the ALMA indicator. Then when a full candle forms over the ALMA indicator and the 12 level, there's an indication of the return to much stronger bullish sentiment, beyond just the short-term context where there would still naturally be minor retracements and volatility to take price under the ALMA indicator at times. However, those drops are less likely to lead to more significant bearish movements, especially since those dropping candles remain in contact with the ALMA indicator. Now 14 reverses rolls to become an obstacle to a rising price inability to close over 14, let alone contact it, leads to the current pause of the uptrend that results in these characteristics where price constantly goes above and below the ALMA indicator. Even though full candles can form above and below the ALMA indicator, they won't be as decisive in terms of bullish or bearish indications. Due to the non-directional movement in the short-term context and the further position away of price from any major medium to long-term upper or lower boundaries, Though it will still be a stronger bearish indication when several candles close and fully form under the ALMA indicator in a row. Though for more impactful results, we would want to see this kind of movement take place with price breaking below a key level, preferably with the addition of increased selling volume. Naturally, dropping back into this significant long-term lower boundary has greater potential to form an upward reversal without necessarily having exceedingly high bullish volume. The 12 level returns to being an obstacle to rising price. So naturally, there would be more short-term fluctuations on the ALMA indicator during that normal neutral to bearish phase prior to a bullish continuation. In this case, early signs of the continuation occur when price begins closing over the ALMA indicator and the 12 level, and a greater indication is when full candles form above the 12 level and the ALMA indicator, preferably for several candles in a row. And like last time, even though it's a steep increase of price, there's failure to clear over 14 or even contact it. Naturally, this weakness improves conditions for a return back towards a more neutral to bearish phase. After a while, similar conditions repeat with a steep price increase where several candles in a row form over the ALMA indicator. The difference this time is 14 is actually contacted. Moreover, price begins closing up through this range. 
while at the same time remaining above the ALMA indicator. So naturally, when there's some resistance, it isn't necessarily going to lead to a bearish reversal. Unless price once again clears below 14 and breaks contact under the ALMA indicator. In reality, quite the opposite is happening. There are those familiar signs of a strong bullish movement this time in a continuation context. Where price clears over the significant 14 range while forming several candles in a row fully above the ALMA indicator. Then this example ends in a similar way to how it began with those familiar characteristics seen with the ALMA indicator at key price ranges and the levels during a shift towards a more neutral to bearish phase. Now, let's see how Fibonacci levels can combine with the ALMA indicator in a specific context with extension levels that are derived from basing Fibonacci levels on a well-defined horizontal price range that price breaks above with a successful bullish continuation. Once the first extension levels are reached, there's the first sign of weakness of the trend. This gives more bearish context to the otherwise neutral movement over the past few days that has seen price relatively unchanged and in constant contact with the ALMA indicator. Given the reversal candles forming at the extension levels, the shallow decline emerging has more bearish weight behind it, despite relatively low selling volume. When the chart eventually recovers from this decline, it will be necessary to reposition the Fibonacci levels in light of these more recent developments in order to better identify where this current bullish continuation could begin to slow down. Just like before, reversal candles at the first extension levels add additional bearish context to the cross back under the ALMA indicator for a relatively sharp drop in a short time without exceedingly high selling volume. To learn more about every Fibonacci tool and other indicators, follow Ascencore. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.